Major Slack videos. Hey, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back. Let's walk through some more Elden Ring. I'm creating this video as a multi-built reference for anyone who wants to improve the effectiveness of their flasks. Ultimately, everyone will have to do this run, but for some builds, this may be a more urgent matter than others, depending on how many points you put into a vigor or mind. Uh, for example, I just recently uploaded part one of my pure Vagabond tank build. If you follow that walkthrough and you're wondering what to do next, this is what you do next. All right? Now, I've taken the trouble to run my boy James Vagabond here down to his last smidgen of health. Okay, Take a look at our status screen. We have a total of 1503 maximum health, but we only have five actual health left. Okay, So as you can see, our health bar is completely empty almost completely empty let's see what happens when we use a flask of crimson tears to fill up okay if we take one flask of crimson tears that's all that it fills up because our flask of crimson tears currently are only at plus two this means that we've only collected two sacred tears to improve our flask um refilling power right so let's just uh see how many flasks it takes to completely refill our health two three and four you actually have to drink four flasks of crimson tears to completely refill our health all right so we must improve that we're going to improve that by collecting eight more sacred tears we've already collected two if you follow the um ultimate power star which you must have because if you follow the um pure vagabond tank run um you're at this point right now and we collected two sacred tears already. One is here at the Third Church of America. That's the third, first one we collected. Just for demonstrational purposes, for those who haven't collected any secret tears whatsoever, it's right over here. I believe this is where you pick it up, okay? One sacred tear is here. And another sacred tear that we collected is right here at the Church of Erith right after we broke into Lyurnia for the first time. We took the secret path past Thornville Castle, broke into Lyurnia. And we ended up here. And that church down there has the second sacred tier that we picked up. And it is right here. Sacred Tears are typically found at churches. Alright, so that's the two we've collected. Let's go get eight more. Now this is basically a grab and run type of deal. There are a couple of dangerous situations that we're going to have to get into. I'm going to show you how to get around those. Um, first one we're going to get is down here in Kalu, in rather the Weeping Peninsula. It's right Starting off at Castlemore Rampart. It's right here. That's exactly where it is. Okay, so we're going to have to ride down here, up around there, and to Kalu Baptismal Church. All right, so let's start off at Castlemore Rampart. All right, we're looking to go that away. Go west, young man. There isn't really a path to follow. Just go west up this up this road here, up this hill here, rather. Eventually, you're gonna see a faint path you can follow. This will hook around right to the church. Okay, so follow this path. You're not gonna pick up anything on the way. We're just gonna get these sacred tears. Gonna hook around. Did I say to left to the right? Keep following the path, hooking around to the right. Ignore those rats. Ignore the cats. Ignore the elephants. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Just go straight for the sacred tier. Here's the sacred tier. Just grab and run. Grab it. Run. Hop over here. And we're gonna have to get out of combat before you can fast travel again. So you can just gallop down this way. Best thing you do is just hop off your horse, get behind this guy, backstab him, 
Actually, they can't be backstabbed. And this guy here, we can use Gravis. No, Sacred Blade. And that guy there. And that should get us out of combat. Next, Church of the Pilgrimage is right, also in Weeping Peninsula, right here at the north end of Weeping Peninsula. So let's go back to our original site of grace, Castlemont Rampart. Actually, there's a closer one that we've already discovered. Right up here, south of Lookout Tower. Okay, right there. Once again, head west from this location here. Hop over this guy. You can see the church right above my boy's head there. That's it right there. See the point there? We're going up that hill. But first, before we do that, Let's take this Spirit Spring down and get an important piece of equipment that will help us in this run. Okay, so take the Spirit Spring down. Float down like that. And we're going here to these runes right here. Go through this hole and jump over this wall here. Down into the cellar. Open up. Open, open says a who, open says a me, and you get the shield of the guilty. Why do we need the shield of the guilty, Slack? You need the shield of the guilty to improve your focus. Okay, that's what this does. This shield has great focus. Look in the bottom right corner, you see this improves your focus by a lot. Okay. This will prevent you from going mad. And we are going to descend, descend into madness at a certain point. You can just ignore all these guys. Hook around back to the south and find the spirit spring. We'll take the spirit spring back up. Like I said, this is going to be mostly a grab and run type of deal. We're just after the sacred tears. Okay, so we're heading to the north, up the hill to the top, to the church of the pilgrimage. And here is the sacred tier. This is very typical. You look for a statue at the end of the church, of the, the yard that the church is located, and grab yourself a sacred tier. And while we're here, let's discover this side of grace. Next, there you go, Church of the Pilgrimage. Next, the fourth Church of America is right here, at the west end of the Weeping Peninsula. Let's go there. And actually, uh, we have a closer side of grace. We just fast travel to this one here. Tombsward. We discover that in the um, Pure Vagabond Tank Part 1 video. Okay, and we brought down the mausoleum. All we have to do is go up that hill and go get that sacred tier. There's a couple guards around the front. You can whack them if you want, but I'm just gonna ride around them. Jump into here, hook around to the back, and once again look for the statue at the back, and there is your sacred tier. Yoink! Mine! And discover this side of Greece. Next, let's head up to Lyurnia of the Lakes. Let me just get rid of this. 
way up here at East Ray Lacaria Gate. Let's wait till daytime. And as you can see, the game is showing us that we have something to do with our flasks. These are the sacred tears that we can apply. We might as well apply them. Increase amount replenished by flask. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Another round, bartender. Gluggity glug. And one more time. Gluggity glug. All right, let's go get another one. This is at Bellum Church. Bellum Church can be faintly seen. See this little rectangle here? Right here. All right. Beacon right there. That is Bellum Church. Let's go there. There is a mounted knight on the way. We could easily whack him, but um, just to keep this nice and simple, let's avoid him. There's the mounted knight over there. Hey, buddy. We're cutting you some slack this time. You may live another day. And once you find this road, just follow the road straight into Bellum Church. Again, go to the statue at the back, grab that secret tier, and discover the side of grace so you can come back here anytime you like. Then and done. Next, the second church of America up in the Altus Plateau. This, we can start off at the Altus Highway Junction. Okay, let's just zoom out the map, show you where that is. Altus Highway Junction. Depending on what you've done in the game so far, at this location, there may be an invading NPC or just simply some badass kind of, I forget what it is, but um, we could easily kill him. If it's an evading NPC, he won't come unless you talk to the guy that is there who's wounded. At any rate, the Second Church of America is pretty much almost due north of our side of grace here. Due north and a little bit west is this little rectangle right here. Okay, um, we're going to have to find a place to drop down. This is a safe place. See this point right here? This is a safe place to drop down. So let's put a beacon there and then we can easily go drop down here and go in and grab that sacred tier. That's the plan. Let's do it. And we've already gotten this golden seed. If you haven't, grab a golden seed there. Okay, you can drop down here. Push further north. This is a safe drop down. There's some dogs outside. You could just grab and run. This guy, you don't have to deal with him. And there's no, um, there's no sight of grace here. So, um, we could take this guy on. Down you go. Bad person. <laughs> Very imaginative slag, yes. I have my moments. Okay. Now like I said, there's no side of grace here, so um if you don't want to take him on, just run away down here to the cliff and then follow the cliff along this way. And eventually you can drop off down in here. And then off those Although you might run into some trouble here. At any rate, you're doing this as a pure vagabond. Next, um... Hopefully. <laughs> Next! The Sainted Hero... Oh yeah, right. What I would like to do is open up this part of the map here. So that we can see clearly what we're doing in this area here. So let's go to the Volcano Manor. 
and take a quick run to open up the map. We are now going into the land of the hand. And we can open, rather use up another secret tier. And again. And just by way of demonstration, take a look at our flask. You see our flasks are up to plus seven. All right, three more to go. There's actually 12 in total, but two of them are completely inaccessible at this point. They're way up in the mountaintops of the giants. Okay, that's like late game stuff. Okay, so there's three more to go at this point. Um, I'd recommend you put the flaming strike, if you have it, assuming that you're following the pure vagabond build, or any kind of, you know, flame ash of war on your best weapon. Okay, so I'm going to put Flaming Strike, Fire Affinity, and let's go grab that map fragment so we can open up the map and see what we're doing. Out the front door. Okay, get our sneak on. I'm going to turn to the left here. Gallop along here. Gallop along the edge of the cliff here. Go past the first fire. You get that stuff there. Forget what that is. Right past the second fire should be safe to drop down. Right here. Jump down. And... Again. Okay, we're in the land of the hand. And there is the map pillar. As soon as you approach it, a big hand is going to approach from that direction there. What we could do is just go racing right past it and up, open up a site of grace. You could grab it on the way if you're quick enough, but um, a safer option is just to go right down here. Discover the site of grace. Rest. Reset. And now we have a better approach because that hand's going to come up from over there. Okay, so your best fire weapon. Got him. Okay, so we got the map, open it up, and now we can see what we're doing. Alright, Stormcaller Church. We're going to start off here at Outer Wall Phantom Tree. Straight up here is the boss fight. We don't want to get him get involved with that. We just want to go up the side here, all the way up here, and there's a site of grace right about here. Discover that. Then we're going to go through this gate down this way and into this area here. Two things we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up uh, the Crimson Seed Talisman at this location here. The Crimson Seed Talisman is a talisman that will also improve how much your flask refill. So we're going to quickly grab that and then we're going to go down to the Stormcaller Church here and get Sacred Tier number 8. That's the plan. Let's do it. Okay? And like I said, we're not going to go straight up the stairs there or the ramp there because that will bump us into a boss fight that we don't necessarily want to get involved with. It's just going to slow us down and may even get us killed. Okay, so we're going to go up the side here. Straight up to the northeast towards our beacon. And if you see me grabbing stuff, it's like, it's just me always grabbing every <laughs> ingredient that I can. No. I grab everything. If it's in my face, if it's in my face and it's on the way, I grab it. 
Okay, and I forgot over here we can get a couple of golden seeds that we haven't gotten yet. If you're following the ultimate power start and then you did the pure Vagabond tank run, um, we haven't got those golden seeds yet. Okay, so going straight up this road here, we will bump into a second reiteration of the Mark of the Fell fight. You don't have to do it. You'll hear him taunting you. There, see he's spawning right there. Just ignore him and keep continuing up the hill here. My beacon's a little bit off. Here is the side of grace here. Let's rest up. Can you show me the map where that is? A little bit off. Okay, now we're going to go through the gate to the northwest. Right there. Hang a left as soon as you go through the gate. You're going to find this kind of canyon slash ravine going down this way. Follow that. This right here. This ravine. Just follow it down. All the way down. This should be a safe drop off. Down here. You can find a road here. Past these guys. <laughs> I was just for gits and shiggles. And follow this road. See off the distance here, the Society of Grace. Rest. Now you're gonna you're gonna need a stone sword key. There is pretty tough hombre at guarding this location here. Sainted Hero's Grave, that's what this is called. It's gonna be tough hombre out front. You don't have to deal with him. I'm just gonna run right past him. Okay, so to the west, through this little opening here, it's a little bit hard to see, it's kinda of concealed, and through the lightning bolt field. And right dead ahead to the west there, that's our location. Just gonna go running right past the guard at the gate. Go right up to the front door and quickly open the front door. Get on the elevator and go down. Hey buddy. Love to stay in chat, but we're about business. Roll through. Get the elevator down and aha, did you miss me? <laughs> about getting back out. It's like typically he's not there when you come back out. Or he's like kinda like just sauntering around. Okay, discover this. Come back here anytime you like. And here, use your stone sword key to open this up. There's a guy in the corner, you have to take care of him, so just go into sneak mode. Lock on. I forget if you can backstab this guy. Let's try. Yep, you can. Down you go. Grab yourself the Crimson Sea Talisman. Okay, so hook this baby up. Boost HP restoration from the Flask of Crimson Tears. Hey, that looks like something we want. Alright. That's all the business we have here for the moment. Let's take the elevator back up and get the F out of dodge. Let's go into sneak mode just in case that guy's there. This is a tough fight and it doesn't pay very much. He's right there. Yeah, it doesn't pay very much. It will reward you with the black knife. The black knife dagger. So, forget it. It's not even going to bother with this. Um, 
this is our next destination here, the Stormcaller Church. So here's where there is another sacred tier. So let's put a beacon there. And he is way off in the distance, so we could just sneak on out here. Hop on a horsey. And right away. On the way down, we could loot this rather lucrative graveyard here. For a whole bunch of... Golden runes. And these little sheep here, they're so cute. These lightning sheep. They roll and they kind of like uh, do a little lightning attack. <laughs> I'm gonna get off my horse here. Sorry, buddy. You're cute, but you bother me. Go away. Grab that guy. Grab that guy. That sacred tear, or rather that teardrop scarab there, that I believe is the lightning ram ash of war. It's a pretty useless skill, but it will allow you to put the lightning affinity on your weapons. Let's see if we can grab it. This is kind of like uh, going off script here. Just want to see which way the uh, the teardrop scarab, because the teardrop scarab is pointed in that direction there. So we gotta get behind him so we can sneak up on him. Now the teardrop is facing towards us. He's like rolling it around so you... When he rolls it around again, the arse end is gonna be coming towards us. So we won't be able to see. Not you. There we go. Should be able to sneak up on him now. One charge attack. There we go. The lightning ram ash of war. It allows you to do what these things are doing right here. That's just pretty useless. But like I said, should allow you to put the lightning affinity um, on your weapon, which is actually really good. It's really useful. Okay, so haven't gotten that. That's just a golden opportunity. I don't want to waste that, so grab that. There's a church right there. There's a, a mounted knight out front. So just run up the side here and hop over this hole here. Okay, here is the sacred tier. And this is another place where there is no sight of grace. Lightning Great Bolts. There's a guy over there. We don't have to mess with him. Let's get rid of this. And next, Kaled, uh Fort Faroth. Way down here. Fort Faroth. Let's wait till daytime. Church of the Plague, here in Kaled. Zoom in the map. That's where we are, Fort Faroth. Down to the southwest, see this road going straight down here and another road that curves around and meets that road? You can see a faint outline of the church right there. That's exactly where it is. Okay, that is the Church of the Plague. Okay, so pointing towards that beacon, let's just hop over this wall here. Go down to the edge of the cliff and make sure you don't go over. Once you get here, push to the... This way here, to the right, and you'll see a spirit spring over there that will allow you to get down. Okay, hop on, and... Down you go. And let's go down to the church and get this particular sacred tier. This church does have a side of grace. You can come back here anytime you like. So there's other business to do here with an NPC called Millicent. 
So don't worry, you don't have to do that right now. You can always come back here later and do it. There are a couple of those, what I call, death roaches guarding the place. There's one over there. You can see him patrolling around there. Two more on that side. But you can usually sneak in safely here. I don't know why I got off my horse. You don't have to do that. And just ride and run right in here. Hit up the side of grace. Rest. And go to grab that sacred tier. And there is Millicent. That's part of a quest involving um, another guy here in Caleb. Right, so that is that. Next, um, I want everybody to go to Lyurnia Lakeshore, the nomadic merchant there. We are now going to begin our descent into madness. Let's apply this sacred tier. Okay, so now we have immensely improved the effectiveness of our flask. When we take a flask, it will refill a lot more than it did originally. Okay, our flasks are up to plus eight. I'm missing one here. Back here at Stormcaller Church, <laughs> I didn't actually pick up the sacred tier. I picked up something else. There it is. That's where I was missing. I knew it was missing one. Okay, sorry about that. Hope you didn't have to go through much trouble to get back here. All you have to do is go back to Sainted Hero's Grave and um, make your way back down to Stormcaller Church. Alright, picking up where we left off. Lyurnia Lakeshore Nomadic Merchant. Ah, back again, are we? Not everyone can tell how good my way This guy sells the astrologers astrologer's gear. The astrologer's trousers actually have good focus protection. It is well worth it to buy these for 1000 runes. Alright, so now we're going to put on the clarifying horn charm which everybody got during the um, ultimate power start, hopefully. And put on the astrologer's trousers and put on the shield of the guilty. With those three items, you're going to give yourself really good focus up to 325. This will protect us as we descend into madness. Well, we go get the last sacred tier. So let's apply this sacred tier. Plus nine. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. One more to go. This is the hardest one. This is the Church of Inhibition. It's located in this location, this entire location here. Okay? It's right below the Grand Lift of Dectus, just south of there. This entire location here is plagued with this tower that's inflicting madness all over, all around this area. And there's also the church that we have to go to is right here. And there's an NPC invasion there, and he's inflicting madness on you. It's just, it's just absolute hell. Um, the gear that I just showed you, um, the astrologer's trousers, the clarifying horn charm, and the um, the shield of the guilty that'll give us enough focus to survive the madness going through that let's start off at uh, the grand left of dexas here okay and i'll show you from there grand left of dexas
Doesn't matter if it's day or night, let's wait till daytime. this way go to the south hop over here this seems like a really long drop and it's a safe drop down okay just a little past there we're gonna start getting affected by the madness tower I wonder if you can see it from me yeah yes you can Okay, using my halberd as a pointer, it's that tower right there. Okay, we have to, I believe that that's it right there. Yeah, we're gonna go up this valley here. We're gonna go galloping past. There's a site of grace just past there. We could rest there and then I'll tell you what to do from there. Just go as fast as you can. With the gear you have on, you should be protected from the madness. You will take a little damage to your health, but it's okay. You see the madness is building up. Make sure you grab that smithing stone two times too there. See, we have fairly good madness protection, but it should not max out. Here it is right there. See it? The flames. Here's the side of grace. Rest here. show you. There we go. That's where we are now. So you just look for the earth tree and it's just to the top right of the earth tree. Now we have to go down here. It's where we have to go is obscured by the tree. But there's this little village here. We go around here and up this path here. Hook around here and around here and up to the church. When we get to this point here an NPC invasion is going to happen. It's going to kick us off our horse. You could do the NPC invasion, or <laughs> you could do like me. We're just going to run up, grab the sacred tear, which is at the very back of the church. Then we're going to go out down this side of the church. And right about at this corner of the church, we're going to cut to the west. And along this cliff here, there's this big pillar, this stone pillar that is sticking up. And we can safely jump off and onto that pillar and the NPC that's invading typically jumps off the cliff and kills himself. It's just a matter of getting, our, getting ourselves safely on top of that pillar. All right, so that's the plan. Let's see if I can pull it off. Okay, so we're going down this way. To the, the southwest. Through the village. Might take a little madness as you go through the village. Once you get to the end here, cut to the north. Keep those cliffs on your left. Push around here. There is the church dead ahead. We're gonna get kicked off our horse pretty soon. Just past this ghostly figure on the right there. Right about now, we're gonna get kicked off. Now run for it. The NPC invader is going to happen right about here. There he is. Just run right past him. There is a site of grace here, but typically he doesn't let you access it. So we're just going to grab the sacred tier quickly now. Run out here. Down to the end here. Just before you get to the end, cut across here. And just jump. And we made it. And let's see what he does. And he killed himself. <laughs> As they say in the candy business. So long, sucker. 
We get the fingerprint grape and the Vikey's war spear. Now we're a little high up. Um, I don't think this drop is going to kill us, but um, first of all, let's refill our glass. And we could craft some soft cutting just in case this fall is enough to damage us. I don't think it will be. Take the soft cotton. And drop down. And we land it safely down. And that's it. Let's go back to the round table. And sub-relate. <laughs> Flasks plus ten. Let's go test it out. Back to the Church of Ella. Okay, and we'll put on the Crimson no, um the Crimson Sea Talisman. Okay, which boosts the HP restoration, plus our plus 10 flasks, and I'm going to put my Vagamon gear back on so I control exactly how much damage this guy does to me, and let's go pick a fight and get damaged. You there, free lunch. Go ahead. You seen this, people? <laughs> Not the brightest bulb in the bunch. Uh, hello. What do I have to do? Send you an invitation? Come on. Okay, that's enough of you. Okay, so we've been damaged considerably. Now you saw how much our flask of Crimson Tears filled up at the beginning. Let's see how much it fills up now. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Way better. Way better. Alright? So. That's it. That is the Sacred Tear run. And like I said, the last two Sacred Tears are up in the mountaintops of the Giants. That is late game stuff. We are still early game. Only a level 43. Done and done. I want to thank you all very much for watching. And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, please give the old Slaxer a big old thumbs up. And post a comment. And most importantly, subscribe. Alright? For those of you following my Pure Vagabond tank run, coming up next is the Demi Human... Demi Humans Plus 7 run. This is going to variably turn the game into easy mode. I'm not kidding. It's going to be nuts with what you got going on now, plus the Demi Humans, plus seven. It's going to turn the game into easy mode. Don't don't miss it. Okay, it's going to be um, a thumbnail linking to that video by tomorrow, hopefully. All right, watch out for it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my videos, and I will see you next time for some more Elden Ring.